Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to go over relays, a bunch of different types and how they work and what they're suited for and what you should be using them for. So it seems like a lot of the new guys that are getting into uh, EFI struggle with this. So I figured I would try to do um, kind of an overview on all different types of relays and contactors, whatever you want to call them, and um, and how they actually function. So. The first thing I'm going to point out is there's some stuff in here that you guys probably are not used to seeing. Uh, this is a hundred. These are rated for 125 amp. Um, this is a. Uh, this is from TE. These are nice if you've got a uh, a large load. Okay. 200 amp. I use these for main uh, battery disconnects a lot. If you want to go to the really fancy expensive version, these are. Uh, these are awesome. These are solid state. These these will kill, um, you know, power main power from the battery um, remotely. So all these all, all these function pretty much exactly the same. Um, it's just it's a little bit a uh, different layout on each one. So your standard relay that you're used to seeing is like this, right? So that's your standard um, five pin relay. So the way they work is if we look, here's a better picture. So if we look, um, 85 and 86, for you guys that don't know how this works, 85 and 86 need power and ground. And what that is, is it's the coil for the relay. What the coil does is it carries no load, but it's basically the on off switch, if you will. Once you apply power and ground, um, you know, power, uh, you know, on one of them, ground on the other, 85 and 86, it'll switch from the load, which is on pin 30 over to, um, 87. So this picture here is showing you that it's rested with no power on it. It's sitting on 87 a, when you apply power and ground to it, it transfers the load over to 87. So if we look at the bottom, there we go, kind of see it there. You see the pins are numbered. So, you know, 86 and 85, they both get, you know, or they, they get power and ground each for the coil, small gauge wire, 20, 22. Um, and, and this is what you'll like, you'll send, a, you know, either a power or ground signal out of your ECU uh, to either 85 or 86. If you're sending power, then ground off the other side. If you're sending ground, send, uh, you know, grab 12 volt off the other side. And then you'll hook your, Sorry, uh, you'll hook, you know, your power here, your fused power here uh, to 30 and then 87 will go out to like your fan or your fuel pump or whatever it may be. So uh, this is literally, look at this as like a, a bridge, right? So the bridge is closed. You're not allowed over it until you apply power and ground. And then you're connecting that bridge by going from 30 to 87. So... Um, that's how a, a basic five pin relay works. All of these that are right here, right? They're all the same. Now they're all the same in functionality. They're just not all the same in quality. Um, these two here, these can be bought for about, I don't know, probably like 12 cents each, um, off of Amazon. These are some that I've pulled out of cars. Uh, I, I don't, I don't trust those. Right? I just don't. Um, I also don't like uh, using a pre-terminated harness that plugs into the bottom of them or spade connectors. Uh, you avoid that at all costs, in my opinion. Um, these are typically what I use if I have to use a single relay. And uh, these are skirted. It's got a nice little mount. There's a skirt on them, so it keeps it you know, watertight. It's got an unterminated plug. So you can terminate this yourself and make something, you know, so you're not dealing with... Uh, a, pl a, a, a pre-terminated plug that's only like six inches long and then you got a you know butt connect to this it's it's crap so uh if you're gonna spend a couple bucks if you're on a super tight budget um at least uh, and when i say a super tight budget this setup here is like 13 bucks i know that you can buy you know four thousand of them from amazon for like 28 cents but they're crap so at least use a good quality relay um, these have uh, a very good reputation. Hello works really well. Um, so, and they're skirted. I don't know. It's just something 
I guess I like, and I'd rather spend a couple extra dollars and not have to worry about them in the future. All right, moving on. We've got a couple more, um, couple more relays. So there's all of our standard five pin relays. And then we've got um, another relay. This is from Leash Electronics. These work great, they're very tidy. Um, I, I like these a lot. I use the dual version of these quite a bit. Oh, let me go grab one. Uh, let's see, here we go. So there's a dual version of that. So uh, it's the same thing though. It really, there's not much of a change here from this. It's just the way that it's terminated. Um, I, I prefer these over these because I, I prefer the contact style on these over this. So uh, the, there we go. The relay with these, the leash ones, if you look, it says ground C plus, so positive, right? So that's your trigger, that's your, um, that's your 85 and 86. So you can send, you can ground this off from your ECU. And um, what, what most people do is they'll take a, a small little like 22 gauge wire and jump from C plus over to the in, okay? So when this relay closes and activates, right? When you send it power and ground, it's passing power through this terminal, through this fuse, through that little LED to let you know it's on and then out to your device. So uh, another thing you need to understand is that um, it, these are a little a couple bucks more than, than these, but they've got a nice, um, you know, fuse holder built into it. There's an indicator on it. If you want a decent end result to your project, don't shop the cheapest stuff on the planet. You know what I mean? Just don't, you know, you don't have to always save a dollar everywhere. Go save a dollar somewhere else, but you don't have to do it here. If you want to be able to put it in the car and not have to be concerned with it, you know, down the road, um, these are a really good um, option. Uh, and, and again, I'm not a dealer for Leash, so like don't contact me trying to buy these from me. I buy them right off his website for retail. I don't make any money on this stuff. I just happen to like his product. So, and this is just a dual version of that, right? So you can see there. C plus, C negative, uh, and then this is your main power in. So there's your standard relays. Now we'll get into a little bit higher amperage capacity. That's another nice thing that's about that's good about these. These relays are good for 70 amps. So these are good for uh, 40 amp. There you go. So. You know, these are all 4030s. So um, if you wanted to get into a little bit bigger of uh, amperage capacity, these are pretty nice. The fuel pumps, big cooling fans. Like if you run like that Ford Taurus fan, you know, you're going to want to use one of these um, or use a solid state version uh, so you can pulse it. But that is, this is a, a step up from here, okay, in quality. Uh, all right. Next, we've got some higher amperage capacity stuff. So these are in essence called contactors. So same functionality though, ground, power, and now you've got this lug connected to this lug. So this is like a, the old starter solenoids from a Ford. Again, most of the stuff I've pulled, like these two things I've pulled off of cars that I've rewired, um, they work well for their intended purpose, but I would try to, uh, I would try to avoid them. These are not continuous duty rated. So, well, this one isn't at least. So these are made for like a starter to engage for X amount of time and then shut off, right? They're not made to run your fuel pump for, you know, hours on end. So keep that in mind, but this is a higher amperage capacity. This is a battery isolator. It's rated for uh, 80 amps. I believe these are continuous duty rated. Uh, this is like an old school, um, uh, this, this is a, a really old school version of, uh, like that. So this is a higher amperage capacity. Uh, it's bulky, it's big, but they work for their intended purpose. So if this is 80 amps, that's 70 amps. I'd take this all day over this. I mean, this is a lot more low profile, a lot nicer. Um, th this is kind of a junk thing. So, but I kept it around just so I could kind of show you. Next, we've got three things that I use for 
uh, three different things that I use for um, larger uh, amperage draw items. So the first two, uh, these are contactors. These are um, rated for a, a lot more continuous duty uh, amperage, okay? So this here is, um, you know, I sell these, um, I, we install these with all of our, uh, you know, on most of the cars that use a, uh, a disconnect. So what you would do is with this setup, like if you don't have an alternator, you'd run your power wire from the battery over to A1, and then out of A2, it would go and feed the rest of the car. So that way you put a small button on the uh, back bumper, you jump, you know, you, you, you apply power to one side and then you apply ground to the other, and this thing goes on and off, on and off, on and off. So that way you don't have to run, um, you know, heavy battery cables if you've got a front mounted battery, uh, those work really well for that. This is a, uh, a, a very larger, it's a, it's a larger version of this, basically, no well, kind of. So these are good for 125 amp continuous. Um, I've used these to, uh, this, is, this is something that I've used quite a bit to power um, uh, coils and like two sets of injectors all at the same time, right? So, you, you know, we trigger it with an output from the ECU, it gets terminated to that plug, and then uh, we could turn it on and off. So I've used these to power coils and injectors. I've also used these. This is usually what I use to power coils and injectors or the MSD4 position um, relay block. So you have uh, quite a few options and they all function the same. It's, it's, it's really just a relay, right? Uh, this is a little different. This is, uh, I'm not a dealer for modern racing, so don't ask me to buy these. Um, you are going to get sticker shock when you see these. So most customers opt for not this because they're really expensive, but they're nice, they're light, they're compact, they've got an indicator on them, and they can be wired for a, um, you can actually wire your fire suppression system into this to have it uh, kill power. So um, if you want to buy one of these, you buy them from Modern Racing. Don't buy them from me because I'm not a dealer. Maybe Justin will make me a dealer after I make this video. Who knows? So these work really well. You would, again, take your power from your battery here and then out of the battery to the rest of the car here. And then you turn it on and off remotely with a push button or a, uh, not a, not a push button, a, um, a latching switch. So hopefully, oh, one more. Forgot about this. And this one you've seen in other videos of mine, if you've watched them, this is a solid state relay from Holly NOS. And uh, this works kind of similar, uh, except for this is a three wire deal. So you got power coming in from your, um, from your battery here on the orange wire, power going out, it's like say to your trans brake on the blue wire, and then you pulse or you just latch a ground on the middle wire, the black with the yellow stripe, in order to make that thing function. So it basically won't pass any voltage across the, from orange to blue until you apply ground here. Same functionality as those relays and all this other stuff. So don't be intimidated by these things. They are not, um, they're not hard to, uh, to install. Just take your time and spend a couple extra dollars. Don't buy, you know, Amazon junk. So have a good one.